right. This is Pastor Randy. <laughs> this is <laughs> night. <laughs> What's going on? Thank you for joining us for Q&A with PG, PR, and PK. See, I mixed it up. That's, I called you RG last clever. time. RG RGPK. So oh, I'm, I'm PG, Pastor PR, Randy now. PG, PR, PK. <laughs> or KK, RG, PG. But if we're going PK, PR, <laughs> then you'd be PP. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you have joined us from wherever you are. Let us know where you are and what's going on. And the music just stopped. We want to know where you are. Know where you coming from? <laughs> what your life have been like? Um, you can click that in the link. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And uh, we we do have a lot of questions. Well, not a lot of questions. Well, but, that, uh, but we have some. Actually, combined. That's combined. Okay, let me rephrase that. We have one or two. <laughs> <laughs> nah, one, I got two, a three, four, five. Five. We got five. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm I'm pulling. I'm pulling it. Pastor Kim, why don't you tell some something real important, something cool? Tell us a funny joke. Tell us a funny joke. <laughs> says that we're Say alive. something funny. <laughs> that was from League of Their Own. Hey Rosie, say something funny. <laughs> so, that's a great movie. Oh, it was an awesome movie. I love League of Legends. I think we might actually watch it with our kids later today. It's it's all, a couple little parts. It's of on it. it's on the yeah. verge. I think we can fast forward through this without without getting too much trouble. Yeah. But we got is, a is bunch like of people. A, a feminist virtue signal that you're giving off right now. A feminist <laughs> virtue signal. What League of Their Own? Yeah. You, League of Their Own. You've seen yeah. it, haven't you? I have seen it. It's a feminist oriented movie. Don't you agree? Feminist oriented. No. no. League of Their Own is about the, the, the female baseball team. Yeah, but, yeah, but they're uh, just... Yeah, I, I'll rest my case. <laughs> so a woman playing sports is feminist? feminist? Ooh, I shall not comment. Let, let no, I am saying let the let theme... Let finish. You're on your own, boss. <laughs> I am saying the theme of that movie was a feminist oriented theme because it was showcasing a professional, right? They were a professional baseball team. But it was a female professional baseball team. So I, I've always thought femi feminist had a negative connotation. No, that. man. No. Oh, oh I, I thought you meant negative the way no. you were saying no, it. No, 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 no. no. Oh, I, I'm okay. speaking about trying to describe something, and it's, it's, it's emphasizing a feminist orientation. I, I didn't mean it negatively at all. Okay. I thought ah. you meant negative. I'll see that you go charging me with the worst of <laughs> motives. Shame, shame, well, sure shame. Like I'm going to look up. Fem <laughs> no, I, honestly, I, I was not thinking of it at all. Feminist. I was teasing I thought you. This is a fun movie. I was teasing you about virtue, virtue signaling for feminism. But, but I, I obviously... I was shooting out into the atmosphere. So it, sometimes your humor. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is the problem I have. Uh, it, it, advocating women's rights are on the basis of equality. Only to me. Ah, sounds familiar with what I was getting at. Well, I, I don't think that the, 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 it's, it's – I think we've digressed. <laughs> yes, we, we, we have lost our way. <laughs> all we lay sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. <laughs> I'm just glad to hear that we didn't uh, devolve too far yeah. from the plot. I'm going to take this and go ahead and slide it on over there. Is anybody watching? Oh, yeah. They got a whole bunch of them. Okay. Somebody's on. Miss Jordan Almost all is on. Watching. Brittany is on. Mark. Oh, sorry. Morning, not afternoon. Afternoon, not morning. Yeah, we're good. Gettysburg. We're at the Gettysburg TGI Fridays. I like it. <laughs> Throw us up on the big screen. Good times. Mark. All right. We got a, we got a bunch of uh, questions, so we're going to go ahead and, and dive in. And we are going to try to be succinct. Why don't you answer because. that question that just popped up? Does it, FCF do anything different for Lent? No. Right. That's, I figured it was a quick. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you talk about what Lent is and the origins of it? Oh, man. You get into the whole uh, Catholic thing. Yeah. It, it's, it's, what is it? It's 50 days before Easter, I think. And you, you start denying yourself something like you don't eat chocolate or something. <laughs> Pastor B just did this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me in the middle. Yeah. No, it, it's, so but it's, 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 it's building it's, up to Fat Tuesday, right? Yeah. So the origins are a And so they go down in New Orleans and they sin biblical. as hard as they can before. before. I mean, the whole thing is just ridiculous. But it's religious activity versus biblical yes. things. Yes, yes. It's certainly things that are not taught in Scripture, but it's tradition that in some hold to. And it's not terrible. Some not people are just, just trying to prepare their soul to be more focused on Easter. I don't want to get caught in a different you know, whole different conversation, but but Easter should not be something we focus on only one time a year. I'll just put it like that. Oh, it's, it's, let it's, him it should be a governing reality. Don't cut him off. Uh, anyway, all right. 
Miss. Having said that, I, re- I like the look, man. I like the Ash look. It's it's a good look. It's a good. Yeah. Yeah. When that some denominations do that, not all do that. The no. whole Lent thing is yeah. just a lot of people do. She's Catholic, isn't it? Uh, well, Methodist? I remember no, Methodists. No, there are the others. Parsons, we used to just have the Lent season, and there would now, be. Did you guys do the Ash? Did you? Do we the, did not. Ash, okay. not Ash Wednesday. But there was like Wednesday. Lent devotions, and then the Catholics definitely do the and Ash. And then a lot of people do the give up something during Lent. Right. Mm-hmm. That kind right. Of thing. Seems uh, like chocolate is a favorite. I give, give I've up. given up. I've given up salad and asparagus because <laughs> it makes it, it. It smells funny. Suffering, man. You're suffering for Jesus. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, when, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you ask an actual question? Hello, Miss Lisa. Hello, Miss right. Brittany. Miss Robin Patrick. What's going on, Donna Wiles? Loved the night series. Actually, I had somebody in my oh, office earlier that I was talking with. Awesome guy named Bob. And Bob. Bob was, was talking about how much. The series had blessed him, and he, he was emotional. Oh, oh. He was saying it. Well, so. I appreciate that. Thank you. Let me Good. ask a question from the Go paper ahead, ask now. A question. Ask a paper question. Okay, here's a paper question. What does Second Corinthians 5.21 mean, where it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us? And this is Deanna. She says, thank you guys for all that you do, uh, taking time to answer our questions. So what does that mean, God who made him who had no sin to be sin for us? Yeah, um, it's, it's a passage that's often used to teach the um, – the penal substitution area of the atonement, the idea that Jesus took all the punishment that we deserved upon himself. I don't think it's actually teaching it. I think it's saying that, that Jesus allowed sin to express itself uh, upon him. He went to the cross as though he were a guilty felon. He was not. He, he didn't have to do that. Yeah. He was, in fact, giving himself as a sacrifice to prove the trustworthiness of his character. So... Um, I think all it's saying there is that Jesus identified with humanity. He loved us so much that he was willing to be treated as a sinner, though he was sinless. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I think, unfortunately, that is a passage that's been mm-hmm. often taken too far to support a certain uh, theological position mm-hmm. that's, since the Reformation has been prominent, the uh, penal substitutionary view of the atonement. I think I saw this individual's name online, too, maybe. Uh, no. Where's the question about Jesus on earth? Uh, the second question. Okay, that is this one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think I saw, I think I Melissa? saw, I wasn't going to say the name out loud. Oh, okay. No, no. It's her daughter. The question comes from her daughter. Go ahead. Fire it out there. Okay. Well, and it, so this comes, the question is actually from a seven-year-old. So we tried to kind of decipher what was being asked. So if, if God created the first two people, then God was alive first in the mind of a seven-year-old. She says, because Jesus came from God to Mary and Joseph, and Jesus was an actual living person, so if he was walking around on earth, when did God walk around on earth as a human like Jesus did? So we said the sort of the gist of that is God, Jesus, probably that understanding. Yeah, it, it, it's we might be misunderstanding this, but it sounds like the confusion is if um, if Jesus is God and he came along from Mary, okay, well, who was the God that created Adam and Eve. And, and of course, the scripture reveals that it, that it was Jesus in what we would call his pre-human or pre-incarnate state. So you have this mystery, and I don't know how you explain this to a child, but God is eternally existent. He is the creator of all life. And in the New Testament, the first um, Gospel of John, first chapter, says that Jesus, in fact, was the creator of all things. But you have this, this enigma, this mystery, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, the, the triune God, they're they're co co equal, co eternal, and yet they speak to one another as individuals, but they want to be understood as the one God because they are in complete unity, complete harmony, equality of essence, eternality, and um, creativity, and all that kind of thing. So, sounds like though the child was co- confused because Jesus appears on Earth far later. You know, you're talking some you know what four thousand years possibly later. Um, and the thought is, well, how can that be? Who was the one that created? But it's the same one. It's. I think we're leaving a real mess for this mother yeah. to ex- <laughs> explain. It's, the, it's hard to explain. The simplicity that even though Jesus showed up on the earth about 2,000 years ago, he has always existed. Yes, he is he just eternal. came in the form of a human being during that time, but he'd already existed, yes. always has existed. And maybe they yes. can clarify the question, because I'm not even sure we're answering the question she's asking. And, well, and we, we struggled with it old, so. too. Yeah. yeah, we were trying to figure what a what would have been the point of confusion for a seven year old. <laughs> so yeah, so if that doesn't help, let us know. Let us know. Right. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sweet lady. All right. 
Next one? Yeah. All right. Who is Jesus referring to in John 10, 16, where he says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They, too, will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Uh, he's talking about Gentile? the Gentile world. Yeah, talking about us. Uh, you know, we're included in that. But he came first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and, but then he, he knew all along and, you know, even projected that uh, he would reach the whole world ultimately. So and when I say the whole world, it doesn't mean every single person, but, but his message. Would. Well, and so that's that, what the scripture refers to as the mystery of the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. That he came not just for Jews, but for yes. all people, Gentiles. Also. Yes. Which was, which was it's a little more than that. The mystery of the gospel mm -hmm. also includes the, um, the, the incarnation as well as the revelation of God in his fullness in Jesus. And so there's a lot in the yeah. mystery of the gospel, but, but that's certainly a part of it too. But we, we say that and it sounds like super obvious. It was not yeah. obvious to the oh, early no. church. Yeah. They oh, were no. so confused by that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They struggled with it. And even Peter, that's where the, yeah. the tent with the... Yeah. yeah. That was a great message, Sunday. Oh, oh yeah. Thank great you. Great message. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, keep All going. Right, whoa, keep whoa, going. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Be back in the other building in, in 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Before uh, there somebody gets times. electrocuted over there, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Neil's like, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of Gentiles, there are a few times in the Bible that reference Gentiles as following the God of Israel, but isn't the Old Testament and current Jewish religion restricted to genetic Jews? A Gentile cannot be a Jew in this case, right? And then they go on. I assume a Gentile that worshiped God of Israel pre-Jesus would be accepted into heaven the same as the rest of the pre-Jesus God followers as they would not have been able to attend the temple and hear the scriptures? The answer is yes. And, and, and there always had been a provision where a, um, a Gentile could become a, a proselyte. In other words, they, they could become a Jew, a follower of the God of Israel. And they weren't treated quite the same, but they were accepted as part of the nation. God even had uh, the same kind of protective laws for them and so forth. But, but this person mm -hmm. is correct. They would have had difficulty, you know, getting near the temple or anything like that. But that didn't mean that they weren't fully accepted as, um, you know, part of God's redeemed people. Mm -hmm. you know, so. In my mind, when we had said the message last week, mm -hmm. and I, I knew there was this part of it that had really jumped out at me. And it was the whole, like, Peter just being full of pride and how the other disciples probably felt when oh, he's man. popping off like yeah. that. And I just, that little nuance, like I hadn't really thought about that before. You and think about how that. denigrating yeah. and insulting what, what, like, what he said. He's, he's like, the one. They're going to run, but been, I won't. Yeah, like, we've been with you three years, and this is what you really think of us? Yeah. You know, yeah. It was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, next question. Okay. Keep it rolling. This is our friend Barb from North Carolina. Aww, Mark and Barb are... Awesome. Church family, but they live in North Carolina. Yep. Gotta love that, right? Yes. We appreciate so much. Mark, chat, uh, he's our host, yes. uh, oh, chat the host stream. for every service week. on the stream every week. Appreciate it so much. The individual who beheaded the statue of Satan at the Iowa State Capitol is now charged with a hate crime, which is considered a felony. The seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Temple include the words compassion, empathy, respect, wisdom, justice. I know that 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So the question, are you aware of this intentional indoctrination? How can the church effectively condemn this? Um, I, I'm going to say something that's going to sound a little naive, but I think it's true. I, I think it's self-condemning. I just... <laughs> it, it's getting worse in America. Mm -hmm. But it's... <gasps> but, no. Overt Satanism is still a pretty hard sell. <laughs> I mean, yeah. and, and I think that, I'm, again, I'm just giving an opinion, but I, I think it's unfortunate that the guy did something illegal. I, I, I think it's, it's self-condemning. It speaks for itself. You're worshiping <laughs> Satan. You're trying to get kids to come to the Satan club. Granted, these clubs are being established. The, the nation is going in a bad direction, but I don't think, the church needs to do anything than what it always does. Satan is the author of evil. Um, you know, yes, society is drifting, but we don't have to condemn it. It's, it's a self-condemning thing. There, there's very few people that would still, to this day in America, you know, cheer, cheer on Satan or, or the Satan Club. I'm so happy that my kid belongs to the Satan Club. There's not many of those around. Now, granted, tragically, yes, it's, 
it's well, getting traction. But, how, but Luc- cutting the head of the statue off is not yeah. the way to combat these things. Right. <laughs> but Luciferianism is the whole point of it makes Satan out to be the hero and yes. Jesus is the one that was... Yes, right? uh, if you get into um, Gnostic Luciferianism, uh, Yahweh is the evil one, okay? And Lucifer is the hero. He, he's the one that brought freedom to Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yahweh wanted to keep Adam and Eve dumb and down, down. you know? And, yeah. and so, and, and this, this has been carried on for thousands of years mm-hmm. in all the illuminated societies, and particularly in the higher degrees of masonry, you have this where Lucifer is the light bearer. He's the yeah. hero. He's the one they're waiting for. He's Apollyon, mm-hmm. Apollo, that's going to return and restore, uh, you know, this nation in particular to be yeah. the, the new Atlantis. So there's, there's a lot of dark Luciferian stuff there that mm-hmm. uh, it, it always masquerades as being moral and Which kind is what and good. The scripture she points out yes. masquerades as light and angel yes. light. Well, you can't. You think about it. Almost all evil has to have some angle of projecting goodness to get to get mm-hmm. buy in. You know, it's like okay, I'm robbing this bank because uh, I'm going to really live well for the money. So, mm-hmm. so why am I? Ro- I'm not robbing the bank for the sake of robbing the bank. I'm robbing it for the sake of living well for on the good. money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so evil always has to have some kind of a so-called positive, yeah, yeah motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Really, Just for the fast. church, it's we keep. Teaching and preaching truth. Yes, right? come on. Yes, that that's the way to really uh, combat yeah. it. I, I I don't think we have to go at it too overtly because right. it's yeah. yeah, so obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm being good today. <laughs> you are. Thinking, he wants to get done. That's you're thinking <laughs> about getting over there and stopping someone from being electrocuted. Pastor Pete <laughs> has got some projects going <laughs> as always. Exciting. Can we? Can nah. we no, no, okay, never so. mind. Can't say nothing. Hey, hey, uh, exciting day tomorrow. Um, he's going to be unbooted. Oh, that, the, the, <laughs> it's, it's the best case scenario. <laughs> that was the soonest they gave me, which isn't even a full four weeks, but they, they may be sticking me in. in you, know, you, never, you never asked me to sign your cast, man. What's that no, all about? Dylan wrote Genesis 3 on it, though. <laughs> the, you, I'll bruise your heel. And, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh, what is that? Uh, 315. Uh, and I just yeah. explained to my children when I got home, who, who wrote Genesis 3.15? <laughs> then they're, which anytime it pushes you to your Bible. That's a good Can thing. it be bad? Can it be bad? <laughs> <laughs> May I, I tell see you Ross what? is watching from the doctor. Yeah, Ross right? is there. Did you know and, that Ross is Dylan's uncle? <laughs> no way, man. <laughs> yeah, baby. Come on, baby. That's a small world we live <laughs> in. <laughs> what are the chances? You know, that reminds me, one of the things that on Sunday mornings, how like a joke can just get old, uh-oh, and I'm uh-oh. thinking like, here we I go. I did again. something bad again. No, no, it's, it's the whole team. It's always like when we talk about when to come out, what slide, and then it's, is that the first time you say it? <laughs> <laughs> or it's, and it's like, this isn't funny anymore. <laughs> well, but everybody so laughs. They have no idea what you're talking about. I know they don't. So basically, People the premise is that. in our pre-service meeting. Uh, um, we want things to be distraction free and as smoothly yeah. as possible to respect your time. So like Pastor Randy has like a specific point when it takes us a little bit of time to get back on stage, get our ears in, mm-hmm. get guitars, be ready to, ready to play for the landing. And, and uh, which is not an afterthought, by the way. Make sure you don't rush out of church. Yeah. God could be speaking in those moments after yeah. he's. It's a good. Thing. It's a good thing. There's a little plug there. Shame. How do, you, how do we know he's not telling them run, run, boys, run, boys, run. Boys, <laughs> run. <laughs> because you're speaking. If I'm speaking, oh, okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, and so we we have a slides that we use that kind of guide the talk. Which Pastor Randy has actually shifted my entire teaching philosophy in that way. I used to be more outline driven, and now you're you are entirely slide driven. So yes. your slides are your guide. They're your note, and I actually. Well, the reason that I used to be outline driven too is because the technology didn't exist to do yeah, things so do smoothly. This. Yeah. Um, this is a much easier, nicer way to teach. And know. then having the confidence monitor to back you also. Yeah. Man, I like that, man. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so um, I do, do the same thing now, but there's slide numbers. So we know and when he goes Second Peter, like we're going to come out at slide 26 or whatever. And so we, we reference that. But we didn't always reference slide number. We would just reference the passage until one time there was a passage in there twice. And, and the slide went up and we're like, man, it's only like 20 minutes in. And so Leo said we sent him out like a land of the slaughter. Because <laughs> Pastor Randy came. He, he heard Leo like, come, 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 come in. And he's like, 
hey, man, you're a little bit early. Uh, why don't you go get a ham sandwich or something? <laughs> <laughs> so every every time we ask, because there have been multiple times when it's in there twice. Yes, yes, it does you, happen. You kind of yeah. come back to that. It's a callback. They believe is what they call there it. There you go. Call yeah. back. Come on now. All right, Ross, we love you. You're okay. awesome. Lisa says, A Night to Shine was great. Oh, I, I saw parking. Was it, what did it say about parking? Um, kudos on the parking config made a Woo! huge difference. It actually that's s- encouraging to hear, sir. We had some even better things we can do this week to help. But yes, the service was a little bit longer because we had a bunch of announcements and stuff in it. And then and then we also you like that, Pastor Andy's giggling. And <laughs> and then we also um, still emptied the parking lot ten minutes faster, even with service Woo! being longer. So we're going to make it even better this week. We got that's, some other information for you. It's a huge improvement. It's going to be a good time, Miss Lisa and Miss Lisa enjoyed a, enjoyed a night to shine. Drink something. Greetings to all, Pablo. Um, there you go, Pastor Andy. Oh, it's jumping all over the place. Uh, why isn't that letting me zoom? There it is. Yep. Thank you for the oh, message series, wow. Pastor Randy, one of the best, and changed my husband's understanding completely. He's wow. 180. God is so good. Amen. Wow. He is. Wow. Thank you. All right. Some of the best music at the end of service. Who would want to miss? Let him finish. Don't cut Mark off. He's got good stuff to say. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Leo Yearling. Yearling. Yeah. Yeah. Leo's at work. Yeah. <laughs> like a lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> Yearling. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, who, by the way, I mean, he is. Oh, he's man, he's, he's absolutely yeah. in a His totally league. Yeah. Incredible. What, what Incredible a, what a gift um, that the Lord gave to this church with, mm-hmm. with Leo. Yeah. yeah. And, and his wonderful yeah. wife. Yeah, and yearling. I, I believe that the term is power couple. Oh. That's what they say. Yeah. Power yeah. couple. Great things going on in the Spanish ministry. I saw your Valentine's, or would you call it a Galentine's, is the, uh, the colloquialism that's used now affectionately. Yearling, yeah. yearling at her. Growth group. They had a bunch of bunch of ladies there. It was awesome. It was a huge group, yearling. So, um, I think we're through our questions. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that was it. I think. Sh- Chandra McCreary says she was able to park in the front row for the very first time. Mm. We're even going to do better this week. We're doing some some more drone footage. And uh, oh, you missed me on the ice today. They were going ice skating. I told them I'd join them <laughs> on one foot, <laughs> which I did for the first time in 15 years. Went ice skating. Um, didn't break my leg doing that. Nope. There you go. Find just stay, stay out of this driveway. You know what I man. find to be most challenging? Walking, <laughs> apparently, is the... Oh, come on, Pastor Kim. This is embarrassing. Oh, no. Throw my apple at it. <gasps> Ooh, no! That's my phone! <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't you give him a little bit? I mean, let him, let him know. Give him a little, little taste of it. Okay. I tell you, the graphics right. and stuff are really good. We're, um, we're starting... you, why, why don't you just talk about it? Look oh, at you. Look at you. you <laughs> Um, we're starting a new series, and it's called Let's Just Talk About It. And um, essentially what it's going to be about is, is trying to have spiritual conversations with people, intentional spiritual conversations, particularly with people that are not yet Christ followers. So that, that's what it's going to be about. Man, I'm telling you, night was good. Night was great. But this this is going to be a banger. It's a I, short one. It's only a four. I got a, I got a, good, I got a good feeling about it. I think it's going to be... It's going to be fire, I believe, is the, Man, is the I, other quote. I, I, I hope it was. I hope so, because I do not have a good feeling yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's hoping right. by Sunday morning, I'm hoping I'll have a good feeling, but it's in process right now. <laughs> is that Miss Veronica Scott? It is. Hey, it's her, in fact, Veronica. It's awesome. Your family is such a blessing. Uh-huh. Your son was hanging out with us last night. Miss Anita, Anita Kuntz uh, says, like just joining. Oh, it was yeah. it was a, a great night. Alexa was yeah, adorable. Amazing. She was she was awesome. She posted pictures, I think yesterday with her boyfriend. So, so join us on Sunday, nine fifteen, eleven fifteen. This previous Sunday, the first service was slammed, but we're working on something. Yes, we're working on something. It, it, is a surprise possible this is, Sunday? Huh? Is this a surprise possible this Sunday? No, it's not. No. No. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be like four more weeks, but we're going to try to get it done for baby dedication okay. the following week. So next Sunday. But uh, give us grace. It's it's the best problems to have. Absolutely. We're, we're take that problem. Keep it coming. Lord, send them in Jesus' name. We were praying that as a worship team last night. So, all right. You're awesome, Miss Veronica. Hug your hubby for me. All right, 9.15, 11.15, if you, the second service breathed a little more than the first service, so if you want to slide there, that's fine, of course, it could be crazy. Where in Easter, where? <laughs> where 
our Easter plants? What are our Easter oh, plants? Oh, where? It's where probably what Easter are plants? our Easter plants. Yes. Oh, we got we got we got some the surprise. Phenomenal music and phenomenal message. You knock your socks off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the muscle. Oh, Eric, are you still coming tonight, E Rock, to help? So let you know. Yeah, Easter is going to be off the off the charts. I'll tell you one thing. Easter is going to be a uh, seating challenge. It is. So you, got, may, you may want to get there early for Easter. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to roll out some. I just realized that Faith put a stool here for my foot this whole time. And, and you used oh. it not. No, I used it not. My foot's throbbing, man. <laughs> oh, Come on, man. Jesus. All right, Steve, I also plan on giving you a call a little bit later. So, All right. We love you. We're going to let you go. We will see you at 9 15, 11 15. Come early. That's what you could do. That's what you could do. You would be wise to come early, particularly you can, to the first service. If you want to know how you can help us, specifically second service, show up early and show up on time because it's really, really challenging for our auditorium hosts. Once everybody stands up, it's really hard to find seats. It, it makes it difficult for them. So you could do us that favor. I mean, might, might even mention that on Sunday. Might even mention that on Sunday. Words are hard. All right, Faith, why don't you push the button so I can go prevent someone from being like you can. <laughs>